internationalization. Awesome. Come on. <laughs> How are you doing? Um, my name is Giedre, and I'm International Content Marketing Manager at Printful. Today I'm in front of you to speak about website localization and whether that's a logical next step for your business. But before I get down to the nitty gritty, let me quickly introduce Printful to you, okay? So Printful is a print-on-demand dropshipping service that helps small and enterprise-sized businesses sell printed products online without having to worry about keeping a stock uh, or uh, delivering that product to the end customer. We specialize in printed apparel, home decor, and accessories. We're proud to say that we integrate with 19 e-commerce platforms and marketplaces. And if you're an avid Etsy shopper and have recently purchased print product like a t-shirt or a mug, Chances are Printed has printed it for you, uh, I mean, pr printed uh, uh, and sent it to you on the behalf of the seller that you found on Etsy. Printful was founded in 2013 uh, and has been growing since day one. Um, in 2018, we celebrated 5 million printed products, and just a year later, we doubled that number by reaching 10 million printed products since launch. Of course, this couldn't have happened without a strong team, uh, and I'm, I'm here to represent marketing, so I want to celebrate marketing team. Uh, marketing has been an important part of Printful since day one. Um, today we have 40 content marketers creating content in different languages. They're also creating different types of content. I'm proud to say that we have Printful website available in Spanish and Japanese. We're also actively working on content in German and French. Um, and if I have to say one thing to highlight before I get uh, down to all of this, is that launching your business in, in another language shouldn't be the first thing you do if you're just starting out. In fact, it took Printful five years to introduce another language. That first language for us was Spanish. Let me name a few reasons why this was Printful's logical next step. Uh, we're a Latvian uh, company that operates um, and it has primary market in the US. At the time when we were localizing our website uh, to Spanish, um, we had three fulfillment centers in the US. Uh, as you know, the Spanish language is the second most popular language in the US. Uh, being in the US, we knew that we, believe we will be able uh, to keep up with the demand in this particular market. We also already had our Riga facility up and running, and as you know, there's another market in Europe that speaks Spanish language. Another interesting thing is that Spanish is in the top five uh, web content, uh, is one of the top five web content languages. There's approximately 60% of content online that is created just in English, which means that um, getting discovered organically is really difficult. However, competing for niche keywords in another language is a lot easier, so we saw this as an opportunity. Finally, our partners, some of our biggest partners, already supported Spanish language, so if we were to offer Printful in Spanish as well, we knew that we would be able to reach a target market who might not have been able to use us before simply because of the language barrier. So. I want to take a moment to celebrate our international team because in 2018 summer, we were a one-person team. One person joined to do, special, to do content marketing in Spanish, and today our team is a lot bigger. So from left to right, you see Suvi, Hema, Elsa, Sara, Laura, Indira, and that happy guy in the top right corner is Raidis, our head of marketing. There's one person missing in the picture, however. That's our Japanese content marketer, Yohei, who was on vacation at the time we took this picture. Um, so if you know that particular market or particular language is a good fit for you at this moment, you need to do a, bit, a little bit of more uh, homework and start by getting to know your market. Research your direct and indirect competitors. Take a moment to understand and research um, 
what are the customer expectations and behavior in this market? If you have partners or friends or contacts that have experience in this market, speak to them. Maybe they'll be able to give you some advice and will al allow you to hoop, uh, jump through several hoops a lot faster. Then take a step back and take a, take a look at your product from the perspective of the market that you're about to target. You know the strong and weak sides of your product. However, what is a pro or con for a particular market is not always the case for another market. Perfect example, made in USA product will be more attractive for US customer. Made in USA product will not be as attractive for let's say German or Japanese customer. Finally, have SEO in mind. SEO stands for search engine optimization, and it's crucial if you want to get that free traffic coming your way. As I mentioned, getting discovered in English is, trying, is starting to get really, really competitive. So if you can work with your SEO team or find an agency that can help you out with it to identify particular niche keywords that you can target and drive your traffic using them. I want to take a moment to speak about translation and localization and the difference between the two, because that's something that we learn the hard way at Printful. Translation, just to make it clear, translation is the process of translating content from language A to language B. Localization is the process of translating content from language A to language B by adding uh, a little uh, sparkle of local um, culture and local uh, peculiarities to it. Let me share a real life example. So back in January, we launched Valentine's Day gift guide in English and in Spanish. Valentine's Day is notoriously known for gift giving and it's a big holiday in the US, and most of the Europe. Um, however, even though Valentine's Day is popular in Japan, it's celebrated slightly differently. In Japan, on Valentine's Day, people give chocolates to each other. Now, Printful doesn't sell chocolates, so it, for us it didn't make sense to launch a website in Japanese, uh, a landing page in Japanese about it. What we learned, however, that there is a holiday called White Day that is celebrated one month after the Valentine's Day on March 14th, and the two holidays are really closely connected. On White Day, people are actually giving presents to each other, so that's why we launched the White Day landing page instead for the Japanese audience. Why am I speaking about this? There's a learning that I want to share with you, and if, if there's one picture that you want to take, a, uh, take uh, during this presentation, is this one, okay? Original content, on content created from scratch, content created for a particular audience will always perform better than localized content, and localized content will always perform better than translated one. However, creating original and localized content takes a lot more time than creating translated one which means that you'll have to prioritize your efforts, especially if you want to launch your website or an app in another language. By prioritizing your content, in other words, starting small, you'll be able to enter the market faster, spend less money on translation, especially if you're not sure that this is the right step for you. That's a good way to start with a smaller uh, amount of content. And of course, you'll be able to assure content quality a lot better. But what you should prioritize? Uh, I'll speak from Printful's perspective. Um, for us, we start with core functions. Think about what parts of your website or functionality of your product uh, without which your co company wouldn't be your company. Uh, for Printful, Printful wouldn't be Printful without products. Our mock-up generator, uh, a tool that allows our customers to create unique designs, and our integrations. For your business, it can be completely different. So think about what, without what your business wouldn't be your business. Another thing, user interface. Uh, all main points of contact the customer has when moving down that funnel towards the conversion, those pages, those sections of your website or app has to be localized. I'm speaking about registration pages, login pages, dashboard, checkout pages. Another one, a bit more serious, uh, is legal requirements. Not in all cases you are obliged to create content in a particular language just because you're marketing in it. But if you are establishing a legal entity in that country, or you're planning on doing so, speak with your legal team or with professionals to know whether you are actually obliged to translate something in that particular language. And don't leave it out, like 
get it done. Uh, you want to be safe, uh, so definitely speak with the legal team. Uh, last but not least, support resources. Frequently asked questions, uh, tutorials, uh, those are the resources that will help your new market understand your product better. And if they, do, they have some problem moving forward with your product or service, these are the resources that they will use. Um, I also want to mention that if you're mo moving forward with content localization in another language, also think how you're going to support it and support your uh, uh, customers to be in that language as well. Uh, I spoke about doing a little bit of research and what you should prioritize. I want to speak right now a little bit about how to use that research to reach those customers more successfully. And I'll speak about Disneyland example. So back in 1983, Disneyland um, opened his first theme park outside of the US. They opened it in Japan. Today, Tokyo Disneyland is the most popular theme park in the country. Let me name a few things what Disneyland did in Japan that they don't do in the US that made this expansion successful. First and foremost, um, more regular cleaning checks. Ride drivers were offered white gloves, uh, as those are commonly wear, worn by uh, public transport drivers in Japan. Um, as product packaging and gift wrapping is a big deal in Japan and is part of customer expectation, Disneyland Tokyo uh, introduced or made sure that there is um, gift wrapping stations all around. Finally, instead of a bunch of takeaway stands, uh, Tokyo Disneyland has a lot more sit-down restaurants and parks where people can have their meals. Now, because this is a digital, uh, we're speaking about digital uh, technic um, tech conference, and a lot of you are offering digital product, most likely, what, you, what can you localize besides the language to make the experience more pleasant for your customer? First and foremost, currency and payment processor. You want your customer to understand how much your product uh, or service costs and then feel safe when making that payment. For Printful, of course, <laughs> measurement system, uh, you want people to understand if there is measurements involved with your product to understand what size the product is. Um, finally, we have, not finally, uh, visual identity. We have visual identity. Of course, we shouldn't do this at the price of uh, uh, branding, but we should think, is there colors or shapes or the layout that we can change to make product, website, app more uh, attractive for the target audience? And finally, holidays and traditions. You remember I spoke about Valentine's Day and why today? So this is one of those occasions when if you do proper research, you will not be wasting your time on uh, time and resources on things that do not matter, and in some cases you will save yourself from PR disaster. Now, you launched your website or app in another language. It's so exciting! But I'm here to say that your job is not quite done. Um, in fact, you'll have to work a lot more. <laughs> uh, introducing another language um, to your website or app will always mean a slowdown in a lot of processes. Let me draw you a quick picture. So say we wanted to launch Mother's Day landing page um, at Printful, and the very simplified version of the process, how we get there, would involve a content writer, a designer, and developer. If we were to launch the same landing page in two more languages, Spanish and Japanese for us, that would involve two more steps or two more people, of course. Um, Content marketers can work at the same time on the, to say, Spanish or Japanese uh, copy, but it's still more people involved. The more people invo involved, the more it's likely the process to get longer. And to make this more manageable, you definitely need to define your flow. Um, the flow is different, will, will be different for everyone. Uh, at Printful, when it comes to website, uh, website um, launches that involve site-wide changes, new products, integrations. Uh, those uh, introductions and that content is primarily led by English team and then adopted by international team. Um, if we're working on less important campaigns, then international team adopts um, and they decide whether it's worth doing it in their market. And then, of course, we have very specific um, country uh, um, and market uh, related um, content that is created just in one language. Um, and 
you have to think eventually about automation. The more languages you will introduce, the more difficult the processes will get. And no matter how defined the workflow is, you need to think about automation. Ideally, you want to be able to uh, submit translations uh, with one click of a button using a, some sort of system. If this is not available to you right now or in the nearest future, I'd suggest speaking with um, your designers and developers so they would help you create pages or parts of the website that are easy to, you, to edit at any time. So you wouldn't have to bother them each time to change something. We were speaking about exciting part, doing research and understanding the market um, and how hard it can sometimes get. So how can I answer this? Can you actually go global without going local? I do believe that you can, but just because you can, it doesn't necessarily mean you should. If, you, if your product is available in another language, um, it doesn't make it immediately attractive to that target market that you're trying to reach. Uh, and if you really want to gain trust and respect of that market, you'll have to play by its rules. Thank you for your time. Um, we hiring. We need content marketers in all languages, and not only uh, content marketers. So make sure to check out printful.com slash jobs if you're looking for new opportunities. Um, if you have any questions for me, can we take questions? Yeah? OK. Gather was fast, uh, <laughs> 14 minutes in only. So we have five more minutes. <laughs> so we have a, a microphone here in front. Anybody wants to come out, or I can bring the microphone closer. There's a question. Hello. Uh, Hi. Idris Irisada from uh, Amazon FBA seller. Um, um, I will. Uh, I have a question about like a little bit general thing about Printful. Mm -hmm. um, actually, what's the solution of Printful uh, when the uh, the accessibility of 3D printers in a house level? And what's your market plan, or what's what, what's going to be you know like how you're going to make uh, like your um, how you're going to participate in a market when these 3D printers and so on like as a like as a on-demand service? I would actually have to consult with our CEO about 3D <laughs> printing plans. Um, because we print on the products, I it's, it's, it's a bit a dif different type of concept than actually building product from the ground up. So I'm not sure I can answer you this to you. Okay. Uh, unless you can specify your question. Sorry? Oh, yeah, OK. OK, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. All right, so do we, we have more time for more questions? Anybody? Question regarding printing, printful, localization? Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for the speech. Uh, I have one question about like, uh, how you are defining the next markets that you want to you know, emerge and open, and have you closed any markets that you have like entered it and then said no, and then why? So, happening. Okay, so Printful has been a global company, company since day one. Um, we're a Latvian company that mostly operates in the US. Our target market, market is the US. Uh, when we're speaking about expansions to another uh, market, especially in, 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 in my particular case about localization, uh, we work closely with our development team. We also take a look at where are our facilities and to which countries we can actually uh, develop pro uh, deliver products so it's timely and it actually keeps up with the demand for that particular market. So if we're speaking about some country that is really far away and we don't have a facility center there, it's very unlikely that we will expand to that country because we simply wouldn't be able to offer a product and delivery time that is expected right now. Uh, with Amazon, for example, being offering really fast deliveries, it's really difficult to all of a sudden say to the customer, oh, nice, you're shopping with us, thank you, it will take a month. Um, it's not gonna work this time, right? So we're working closely with development team and uh, business development team to identify markets, all all, all, as well as look at what, are, what is around where we already are. We are open to everyone. All right, thank you for that question. Any more questions? We have time for one more. All right, I guess that's thank it, you. Kendra. Thank you very much.